So in this lesson, we are going to look at a method that you can use in the lab to determine the volume of an object whose shape is not regular, such as a stone. And we are going to use very simple pieces of equipment in the lab. One of them will be the Eureka can and the measuring cylinder and of course water. If you want details of how this experiment is carried out, you can go to your course book in the new book. You can go to page 21 and you'll be able to read the instructions on how to carry out the experiment. Or you can use the old course book. Uh, the method is also described there in the same way. So it does not matter which book you have. So go right ahead and read the steps on how to carry out this experiment. And we are going to do it together, step by step here. So I'm going to start this lesson by taking you through the steps so that you can see the steps and then come up with the words that you would use to describe these steps. They're basically four steps that you need to follow in order to do this. So the aim of this experiment is how to use a displacement can, sometimes referred to as a Eureka can, to determine the volume of an irregularly shaped solid. So let me quickly run through these clips so that you will be able to see how it's done. So those were the steps that are followed to determine the volume of that irregularly shaped object that I was using there. Now, I want you to pause the video and write down the steps the way you think I would be able to describe them. And then come back and play the video so that you can confirm whether your steps are correct or not. So go right ahead, pause the video and write down the four steps. Okay, welcome back. Let's go through the steps one after the other. In step number one, you fill the can with water until it runs out of the spout. This section of the can is referred to as a spout. So let's carry out that first step. And there you have the first step. Fill the can with water until the water runs out of the spout. Just a word of caution here. When you have to move this Eureka can from maybe from the top all the way to a level surface, some water, the can may be displaced and some water may come out of the spout. So make sure that as soon as you put it on a level surface, you top it up. You add some water and then allow it to drip out. Then you've got to wait until the last drop drips out. That ensures that the surface of the water 
is at this point here right inside the can is that unfortunate we can't see inside the can but inside it the water surface is up to this level there if it tends to rise above that surface then some some drips out so let's go to the second step step number two is to place an empty measuring cylinder under the spout and you make sure that the cylinder is empty so that step was as simple as that and then you bring the irregularly shaped stone close to the surface but make sure it does not touch the surface then let's go to step number three in step number three you now immerse the solid into the can. Remember these are the steps that I had asked you to write down. You may have used other words which are acceptable so long as what you're trying to describe is exactly what you see in these video clips. So let's play this section so that I can outline a few points. So we are immersing the solid and you notice that the water runs out of the spout. That is the observation. Why does the water come out of the spout? Remember, before we immersed, our water level was up to that point. The moment you put the solid into the water, some of the water must give up some space for the stone. So the water moves up and as it moves up, it moves above the hole in the spout. This hole here, the moment it tends to move up like that, automatically it flows out like that. So this is the point. The solid occupies space. It has volume. Remember, volume is a space occupied by matter and solid is one form of matter so that stone occupies space and therefore when it is immersed into the water the water must give up a space equal to the space occupied by the solid because the solid has come in so some of the water must flow out the point is we are able to trap that water that comes out now, what is the relationship between the volume of the water that has come out and the volume of the stone? You are right. The two are exactly equal. The volume of the water that flowed out of the can is exactly equal to the volume of the solid. So we say the volume of the water displaced is equal to the volume of the irregularly shaped stone very very important so let's go to step number four in step number four we just need to take the scale reading of the level of the meniscus on the measuring cylinder i've mentioned the word meniscus here i'm going to explain it in a moment what it means as well as help you to read the scale over there so let's uh, play this clip because We'll try to zoom in and see the scale properly. So there it is. It is zoomed out exactly. And this is the volume. This is the level of the water. If you look at the level of the water closely, this is what you will be able to see the surface of the water is here there is the lowest surface here but as you come towards the edge of the measuring cylinder that water curves upwards like that but at the center it is sort of flat this is what we refer to as the meniscus now how do we read the volume of liquids in the measuring cylinder now let us say this is the surface of the water like we have said it curves out like that this is it forms what we refer to as the meniscus so the meniscus is 
the surface of the liquid that is formed that the liquid forms when the, that liquid is put into a container there is this division here on the scale which corresponds to this lowest point on the meniscus and of course let me put a, a scale here just some kind of scale to help us make this reading let's assume that is five so we have six seven eight there will be nine here and there will be ten here so there are five divisions here one two three four five each division represents one centimeters cubed so when you're asked to read the volume of this liquid do you read eight or do you read nine because there is this point of the liquid which touches this mark here and the lowest point of the meniscus is again is this reading is it eight or nine similarly over here you will find that this the lowest point of the meniscus is 26 i will show you, you in a moment how i've determined that it's 26 so is it 26 or 27 for me over here the correct reading will be eight centimeters cubed because it corresponds to the lowest point of the meniscus how about this point here first of all we must determine the volume represented by one small division on the scale we have already looked at this in a previous video so you might want to review that video for you to understand how we did that because there are several examples that i've given and some exercises for you to attempt but just to review this, this is how you determine or the volume represented by one division on this scale. You look at this reading and this reading. Then you find the difference between the two. 30 minus 20 gives you 10 centimeters cubed. But that 10 centimeters cubed is divided into 10 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you divide by 10 divisions in order to find out the volume represented by one division. And 10 divided by 10, you get 1 centimeter cubed. So this is indeed a very simple scale to use, where one small division represents 1 centimeter cubed. And remember, it is not always going to represent 1. Different measuring cylinders have got different scales. That is why you should review that other lesson so as to refresh your your understanding of this concept so let's see if this is 20 this longer division is 20 then we've got 21 22 23 24 25 26 and 27 and the scale reading corresponding to the lowest point of the meniscus is 26 26 centimeters cubed and that is the volume of the water in the cylinder and remember consequently it is the volume of the solid which was immersed in the eureka can and this experiment is just as simple as that i'd like you to go to the end of the chapter attempt some of the questions which involve the eureka can in order to practice on this skill further one more step if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do that so that when I prepare the next video, you'll get notified immediately the video is out. So it is important to subscribe. So in my next video lesson, I'll be teaching you how to use a relative density bottle to determine the relative density of a liquid such as paraffin. So see you in the next video.